And welcome back to The Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix, episode 57. As always, I'm your host, B.B. Brian Adams, joined by my co-host, Junior Ruiz, and special guest, Alex Martinez. What's going on? That's right, we got the whole Comics Remix crew in the house. I remember when the intros would take a lot longer when we had that, because we had to go around the table. Right. When it was John and Dave and Carrie and... Tony, no. Yeah, yeah no, Tony, Tony wasn't there Just yet. on the holiday one. And then that still wasn't full. It was just partial because we didn't have Dave or Alex. Yeah. yeah. It's good now that they're all dead. It's a lot faster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it works. Well, Alex, for those that don't know your show, introduce yourself. Who are you? Uh, my name is Alex Martinez. I'm uh, the host of Remixed Reviews. Uh, and if you don't know, then I feel sorry for you guys. We do. We, we plug it. We plug yeah, it we plug it every episode, episode anyway. Yeah. You should know. You say you listen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Semi-listen, man. Semi-listen. So this week we're going to just do CDC... C- what? CDC. SDCC. Oh my god, did I say CDC? <laughs> yeah. I thought what you the? said SEX. I was like, what? what? The? <laughs> I'm pulling like, I've been watching Conan O'Brien, which is from San Diego Comic Con. Nah. And the, the you know how I always complain on Facebook about uh, captions? Mm-hmm. They put it as FDCC mm. instead of SDCC, which right. apparently I, I shouldn't have a job as a caption either. San Diego Comic Con movie news, That's the that's the topic. So... Do Thanks it, for man. pointing me out, putting it out that I. No problem. How do you like? It's the the country's biggest comic con. It's like the mecca. It is. No, absolutely. How'd you get that wrong? I don't know, man. I, because I think I'm excited. And... Way to document those faults. Yeah, <laughs> totally. We're all about pointing out each other's. I'm gonna start docking shortcomings. Your, docking your pay when it starts coming through. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Like, remember all those times you messed up? Fifty percent of nothing. Man. Yeah, fifty <laughs> percent of nothing. Lot. Still, yeah, yeah, still yeah. pretty good. So speaking of screw ups, no Marvel, Sony, or Paramount at the con this year. Why would you say it's a screw up? Well, I mean, you got to be there to promote, but I guess if there's nothing to promote. But then I feel like Marvel not being there, now that Disney owns Marvel and Disney has their own con, maybe that's just like, oh, well, we really don't have anything. Doesn't Fox have uh, Fantastic Four to promote? So? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's, I, Marvel, Sony, and Paramount. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fox was actually there. Yeah, okay. Were they? Cause I, what, oh, yeah, Deadpool. Yeah, Fox promoted Deadpool. There wasn't. I couldn't really find too much on Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's like a dead horse anyway. Well, since there's only pretty much one Marvel thing, let's go ahead and start with that. There's one Marvel thing? The, the, the oh, Deadpool. yeah, Deadpool. Not actually Marvel, but no. Fox. I mean, Marvel Marvel S. Because everything else pretty much came that came out of there. Big I, I was, was actually DC. surprised Sony didn't bring anything for Apocalypse. They released um, uh, character sketches of Apocalypse. That's it? Yeah, I yeah. saw it. <clears throat> yeah, they were nice. Yeah. And that, uh, Hugh Jackman confirmed some stuff as well. I don't know if you saw that. No. You want me? I, I, go ahead. Yeah, he I confirmed didn't. confirmed the Wolverine 3 is Old Man Logan. <laughs> hey, they can't see the face you're How making. The, okay, right? you know what? This is, <laughs> the, I'm going to have to throw beefs in here. But what the f***? How is that even supposed to work? He's an old man now. That's why. No, I, I get that. but Storyline. I mean, Storyline-wise, yeah, it's I'm just... Saying, it makes absolutely no sense. We've, 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 beat, we've been down this road before. Yeah couple episodes ago. I don't get how that works. I did see that he's also, they're doing like a precursor to Peter Pan called Pan. And it looks like that he may be playing Captain Hook before the Hook. Okay. Hugh Jackman, you know. Okay. I just, it was there. Dustin Hoffman was the best Hook in my opinion. Yeah. Agreed. So Deadpool. The movie I could give less of a crap about. Actually, after watching the trailer, I'm going to have to see that movie. You know, I'm a big fan of, uh, no, I can't remember his name now. Ryan Reynolds? Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I'm a big fan, but Not I don't remember big. his name. <laughs> yeah, right. I like, you know, for, for his comedy aspects, I've always the appreciated Van, yeah. Ryan. You know, Van Wyatt. Very, yeah, exactly. very quick quips. I've always felt like that when, waiting. They, when they cast him, Waiting, dude, that was a great movie. Yeah. Um, I felt like when they cast him as Green Lantern, it was a misstep. He should have been Flash. Yeah. Although now that we have a TV Flash, I'm not sure he would have worked as Flash. Like, he would have been a good, quippy, like, Justice League animated version of the Flash. Yeah. If they took that the Wild version West of the version. character and put him on the big screen. But no, we have Deadpool, who's quippy as f***. The trailer looked really good, man. Like like I told you, I, I totally s*** all over it. And then you were like, did you want? And I'm like, no. And they're like, how can you even say anything? And then, well, you were right. 
I actually need to see that movie. It looks now, good. Now, from what we, because Alex just sat here and watched it as well, we need to pick this trailer apart from what we can remember. Big, big uh, notes from it, I suppose. Oh, uh, like we just pointed out to you, the Green Lantern slap mm-hmm. when they're taking him under, and he's like, you know, do do uh, do right by me. Don't make my costume. And I was like, we're gonna make you a superhero, and he's like, yeah, do right by me, please. Don't make it green, and don't make don't make it animated. So I don't know uh, if other Deadpool fans or people who've seen the trailer have even caught that. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the Rob Liefeld comment. Which I also missed. That yeah. was pretty good. Um, it looked like I said they're going with a strong rated R, it looks like. Tons of profanity. Sex scene. You know, and it's not like under the sheets kind of it's, soft sex. It was like banging a chick against for, the door sex. For the character and the type of humor and material I think R was a smart move honestly. oh I agree I kind of hope they keep the costume on him more though <clears throat> almost like a Judge Dredd where he had that mask on the right, whole time right. you see Ryan Reynolds get some of the origin story quick out of the way and then keep him in the suit almost all the yeah time. the suit looks fantastic yeah, and mm-hmm. it'd be nice if the majority of his screen time was just with the suit and that's that's, that's another credit I have to give to the, the filmmakers on that one is the suit actually reflects the character as you see him on the, the page mm-hmm. I don't know why People make it so hard not to just get the costume right. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Well, it took Marvel what three tries to get the Captain America suit right. X Men franchise still hasn't gotten any of those right. So yeah, no, that'll never happen. Well, speaking of the X Men franchise, we're all all three of us after watching this. Was that Colossus in the Deadpool trailer? It looked like it it looked like it could be. Uh, Kind of a weird fit for him though, isn't it? Yeah. Like just a random, let's just slap Colossus in here for fun, with that kid with that crazy ass name. Yeah, I I don't know. I'll see it when we get a better version of the trailer. I'm sure. We'll Stanley got the cameo in there as the uh, the announcer at the strip club. <laughs> so Wesley Snipes was also at the con. Yep. And more Marvel talk. Said he's talking to Marvel, not necessarily a Blade movie. Like he says, if they don't do another Blade movie, that's fine with him. Because the character they're talking about would go toe to toe with Blade, which I really can't think of another character in the Marvel U that Wesley Snipes could be playing. Of you know, the father of the Panther. Uh, yeah, there's a good one, but shit. yeah, uh, that's the for his it. age too. I mean, that would work, but I don't. I mean, unless he's going to be Power Man, which wouldn't really work for me. I don't think he's got the physique to be a Power Man. I think you teach Big E from WWE how to act a little better. He'd, he'd probably get pretty decent. But he's even a little too big. Uh, but, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Snipes back in another Blade movie. Those yeah. were uh, some of the best, in my opinion. Did it that kick off the Marvel originally? Wasn't Blade their first yeah. project? Yeah, it was, mm-hmm. it was really well done. I liked it. Yeah, the opening scene on that movie, man, yeah. was just like, wow, just so and intense. Brave, and like, yeah. yeah, it was great, man. So I'm reading online, and they're pretty much saying that uh, that that is uh, Colossus. That, that's what they're okay, saying. Okay, yeah. it looked like him. It even it did he it did even look like he had the same yeah, leather that's what, jacket. That's what they're yeah. mentioning. And then, uh, the other one is the, the Negasonic Teenage Warhead. That's the the, the other character's name. Yes. Um, and they're saying here um, that because they that it, it's Deadpool's gonna fit in the X Men universe. It's not a solo like spinoff movie. So he's actually involved in the X Men movie. Well, it universe. has to. I mean, they have Colossus yeah. in his X Men yeah. universe. I wonder if he'll be an well, X Force. Sometimes then. they might. Probably. You know, because there is the rumored X Force movie. Yeah. yeah. And they're saying they're like, well, Coloss- how can Colossus be so big here and he was smaller in the other one? Well, remember, Days of, Fu- Days of Future Past changed a lot of stuff around. So. Yeah. yeah Could have probably been working out more. Yeah. <laughs> that too, right? Yeah. yeah. Simple been as hitting that. Hitting fields in Russia a little harder. <laughs> So that's pretty much all I've got on the Marvel end of the pool. Um, a lot, lot of DC. Uh, we could start right off with the TV. Um, Arrow. It's going to become Green Arrow this new season. I've seen, the, I've Which, seen a picture of his uh, uniform or his uh, outfit. I liked it. It looks like, good. Yeah, it looks it good. It looks good. Uh, they're saying not only in look but in tone, the show is going to become lighter. and It looks good. they have got a bunch of characters. They're planning to... Uh, well, I think that's what they did with the last season of Arrow. They but, show yeah. him riding off into the sunset, and mm-hmm. they show him cracking a smile. I think they realized with the Flash that they had to go lighter, like cause there was just too much of a contrast, and they're always integrating both shows. Mm-hmm. I think they figured, you know what, it's time. Let's move it in the Flash direction because 
it was just it, the last season was just I was losing it was losing me I was like needs to be up a little more upbeat man. yeah I think like I felt for, sad watching it <clears throat> for me Arrow was uh, much like Agents of Shield which I still refuse to watch was a tough sell the first season like it was hard I'm not gonna sit here and be like oh Arrow out the gate was awesome. Arrow was rough for me to get through the first season, but after I made it through it, I was hooked. But it still hasn't had as strong of a, a, a showing as I feel like it could. Whereas Flash, man, like out the gate, they obviously hit the ground running with that show, and it's been nothing but phenomenal. Well, the Flash gave you whatever what we all want, and, yeah. you know. And what I liked about WB as a station with their comic book thing, Smallville, they did the worst thing they could do. They dragged out everything that. Clark Kent ever went through into agonizing pain. It was just took too long. What I liked about Arrow is they kind of got to the point pretty fast. Yeah. Gave him a suit really quick, gave him his name, everything. Um, and with Flash, they did it even faster. By the end of the first episode, no pun intended. They, yeah, they, yeah, he had he had the whole suit already. They already had villains already mm-hmm. lined up for him. So I think the Flash is just they finally decided they listened. Like, well, let's get going faster. Yeah, uh, whatever, man. It's all good. We got to be. Right. Um, we're getting Anarchy and Mr. Terrific in the fourth season. Yes. Nice. Um, Mr. Terrific is going to be gay. Really? Yeah. That's why he's Mr. Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> um, Willa Holland, who plays There's his, so many the uh, queen, is excited about being Speedy. Yeah. I'm excited about the fact that Speedy is going to stick as the moniker instead of her being Red Arrow. Because, yeah. you know, when she introduced herself at the end, she's like, I was thinking Red Arrow. Yeah. But he was like, whatever, well, we already calls you Speedy. So I think that's cool. Um, we're not sure if uh, Burrowman will actually be in Ra's al Ghul gear or if he'll be in the Black Archer outfit. There's speculation on that. Um, Do you think they'll go the route with her being Speedy? Remember how in the... In the, the drug problem? Not, not just the drug problem, but in the later incarnation of Speedy when it was the female... In uh, who wrote, the Kevin Smith series, remember how it, it transferred over? I think it was uh, who wrote it, Judd Winnick, Phil Hester, so. or whatever. I, I don't, I don't, Phil Hester, it might have been Winnick, but um, how Speedy was the girl and it was Mia, remember? She was the former mm-hmm. prostitute and then she found out she had AIDS and yeah, she yeah. died. You think they'll go that route with Thea? No, but, like, absolutely it not. Turns out she has like AIDS or something, yeah, no, and she'll die. I don't even think you'll do the the like the classic like you know the drug addiction the drug addiction thing because I think that's already been handled. From Remember, the they're supposed to go lighter. And that's dark yeah. as hell. Man. Yeah, like, that's dark. Yeah, having to have AIDS is dark as hell. <laughs> like what? That is really dark. So yeah, Green Arrow is going to be awesome. The Flash, dude, sounds amazing. They're... I saw a little trailer. Well, it wasn't mostly a trailer of the first season, but at the very end, they show. A different Flash. I think it's uh, Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick, yeah. because his Flash isn't yellow; it's all white going through the city. Nice. Even though Flash is talking in the background, and then and then you hear Jay Garrett. I'm Jay Garrett, and he's like, I was here. To, uh, something like I'm here to talk to you. Or I was here to some some reason that he was there. He was explaining to him, but it's just uh, talking over mm-hmm. him running through the city. But he's. It looks like he's going into every building, like he's searching for something. Nice. So, like, it's a long trailer, but the whole thing is just a, a recap of season one, and then that little, maybe one-minute yeah, voiceover. he's totally been confirmed as being a character in the yeah. second season. Yeah. Which is, that's totally awesome. Same with Zoom. Uh, Zoom, yeah, we're going to get Zoom, which is pretty interesting. Wally West should be showing up. Patty Spivot will be showing up. But wasn't Wally West, like... A descendant or something like? No, Wally West was uh, Iris's his, his nephew was Barry's nephew. Yeah, right. But through marriage, right? Because yeah. that's Iris's nephew, right? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, so that how is he going to show up unless they're just yeah. Hey, see, it? obviously they're going to have to show. It's going to have to be different unless he shows up from the future. I mean, yeah, unless they pull the uh, the impulse thing and you know yeah. I don't know. I told him Bart Allen. That's it. Bart yeah. Allen was impulse. Unless they make well, that's what I meant. With they, they, they make should, Wally they West it. like a Bart Allen type character instead. Now Bart Allen was who? Was Bart Barry? Allen was Barry's grandson. Okay, that's what, all right. From the future, grandson or great grandson? He's grandson. Was grandson. grandson. Yeah, because in the in the Flash comic books, Barry and Iris go into the future, like after the the trial of uh, the, the trial of Barry Allen when he mm-hmm. kills uh, Professor. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> I get so con- <laughs> get it's so confusing, you know. Yeah. 
But yeah, so then that character comes back, and then there's, uh, you know, Cisco. Not vibe. really touching on him being vibe yet, but they're going to get a little more into it. You got a break dance? Like, yeah. Vibe used to yeah, with right. With a little boombox? <laughs> well, yeah, they hinted at it at the, the season finale, season one, mm-hmm. yeah. where uh, dude was telling him. He was like, you know. What about Caitlin Snow becoming uh, yeah, Killer Frost. Frost. Frost? Now, they need to get that. That'll be good to get that going. That's going to be really good. Um, they will be getting returns. Uh, Grodd will be back. Captain Cole will be back. Golden Glider. And some new villains in the addition to Zoom. Uh, I can't wait, man, for the second season of that show. It's just going to be awesome. Leading up to Legends of Tomorrow. That's going to be good. Which is just going to be friggin' great. The whole scene where they're shooting into in the big warehouse and they're having this big battle. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's the real comic-esque. I was like, I can't wait for that. Uh, apparently, that's gonna they're going to be all over. Obviously, with Rip Hunter in there, they're going to be all over the timeline for DC. Which is going to be cool, man. It's, it's It'll be nice to see them. Just maybe throw in a Vandal Savage. Well, yeah, he's, yeah, he's the main villain. For yeah, he's the main villain. That's right, that's yeah. right, that's right, that's yeah, right. And that's what I like, that they get to go through time, and they get to change everything, they could do what they want. Really smart to go that route, because you get more freedom, just like with the Flash. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Do things and then say, ah, eh, well, it didn't really happen. Like, yeah. Absolutely. It's uh, it's it's going to be an interesting show, man, with a mix of heroes and villains, and the girl that plays Hawk Girl is, like, hardcore training, and... She's, She's hot. Really I heard, the and there's and there's supposedly going to be right? a, a Hawkman cameo, yeah. yeah. Oh no, I had a rumor about her appear. already getting possibly getting a spinoff because they liked her so much. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah, that's like, wow, yeah, that's they, crazy, man. And they get there was a trailer released for Vixen, which I'm pretty sure everyone's seen. I don't think that's going to be on TV though. Uh, the animated Vixen. I did that see ties that into, trailer. Yeah. Which is it's kind of weird that they decided to go the animated route with it. I'm not. And sure. it's a it's Arrow and. and and uh, Flash from the WB, yeah, right? Yeah. It's their character. Yeah, the so that, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that cartoon will tie directly into the CW DC verse, which mm. is freaking awesome, man. I, I really can't wait for Legends of Tomorrow. It kind of sucks that they're not, uh, they're like mid seasoning that show. So we'll get Flash and Arrow, and then when they take their mid season break. Legends of Tomorrow will start I'm fine up. with that. That way there's always something on the DVR. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good, good for the that. filler. Yeah. I'm um, hoping the well, Walking Dead does that with their other spinoff, kind of have it offset too. Yeah, well, it's, it, that's starting in August. Yeah. So. so, I mean, if it does, uh, and I think there's only six episodes, so that thing will that'll be over before uh, Walking Dead even comes back. The Walking Dead takes a break every episode, huh? <laughs> One, yeah. Have you been catch, reading up with the Walking Dead comics? Yes. You see who they killed? I did. Wow. Yeah, I actually didn't read this week's issue, and then when I was going through, like, the con stuff, that was one of the big things that they told, and I, I'm like, why would you spoil that, man? It's like, the issue comes out on Wednesday, and then two days later, it's like, oh, look who we offed already. Like, let me like, get man, a chance to get on. to the shop and get it. Right? It's, like, ridiculous. I but, hate the ones that spoil it on Wednesday mornings. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous too. like it's wednesday new books are out this is what happened like dude it's wednesday that's I'm pretty much it up. as far as the cw side of of uh dc tv gotham's back for season two obviously um apparently they are bringing back that kid as the joker told you the yeah joker. i kind of figured that. i didn't think they were gonna change him why? yeah i wasn't i just i don't know man i just didn't like him i just didn't like him the show is in the middle for me uh Either way, if they do some cool things with certain characters, that's fine. And if they don't, that's fine. Because for me, the show is like, I like the- I'll watch it, but it's not so, It's not a Flash. It doesn't rank as high as a Flash where no, they mess uh, something right. up. Ah, oh, you messed it up. Yeah, like, they don't even, it doesn't even rank as high as Arrow. Yeah, Gotham gets a break when it comes to if they mess something up because I'm not that invested anyways. I like it. I do watch it. I, but- I like it. It's not great. It has some good, you know, some points, but... I mean, it's just kind of there for me. If they took out the whole Fish Mooney thing, I would be fine with that. Just her character completely doesn't need to be there. Yeah. You could have the two main mafia guys going at it, and she does not need to be a third story at all. You yeah, could that just was completely remove her. That was just the, for star power. The stupidest episodes is when she like rips out her own eyeball, yeah. and then she's got like a new eye. Like the next, it was just dumb. Yeah, she it could, was she could die just already. dumb. But so obviously, you know. Uh, this season, Oswald Cowpot the Penguin is now the kingpin, so to speak, of Gotham City. I hope he's fatter. He needs fatter. to put on a little bit yeah. of weight. But they, I mean, outside of like them adding some villains, it's, there's really not much going on. I think we talked 
a couple weeks ago that there was going to be Mr. Freeze. Yeah. We don't know how. Joker's definitely coming back. I think Gordon just needs another part, of another a little more in-depth character. It's the same character and the same attitude every episode. It's just like... He's becoming the least interesting character on that show. Yeah, I like Harvey. Harvey Bullock for me is like one of the most interesting yeah. characters on the well, show. Well, he's got layers in his character. Yeah. You know, you see first you thought he was just a really dirtbag, then you see that he cares, and he's got different layers. He goes back and forth. And then we got a little bit of Supergirl, but not much. I mean, because what the hell is there really to say about Supergirl? Um, I mean, it sounds really good. Uh, the fact that they're going to have Hank Henshaw is going to be in it. Yeah. yeah. So we'll possibly get a Cyborg Superman at some point. That That's sweet, man. Um, for some reason, they felt the need that like to mention that out of thousands of women, that uh, what was her name, Mel- Melissa Benoist, if I pronounce that wrong, I'm sorry, but I guess they went through thousands of, of uh, casting calls before they picked her. Unlike Arrow and Flash, where they were the first two guys they sat down with. Like Amel was obviously who they wanted right out the gate, and then Gustin first time done, which doesn't like I, as much as i was like oh that kid was on you know glee uh oh, i'm so glad i didn't know that yeah <laughs> i knew yeah, it before like, going I didn't the know show. that at all like but and he killed it so I, I could see glee like oh that's all way for flash instead of the other way around i got nothing that nothing bad to say about it man <laughs> uh oh okay so we're getting live wire reactatron and maxwell lord yeah will be in supergirl so that's interesting I gotta check that pilot out slowly. Like I said, I, I was saw it. Because... it. It it had its pros and cons. Overall, it got me interested enough to want to watch more episodes, and that's all you could ask from the first pilot. And I thought she was a lot uh, cuter than originally thought. Yeah. The only thing I pointed it out is my brother was watching me, and she has an actual scar and in, in the indent of her eye, like mm-hmm. she probably got when she was a kid. So he, he when he once he pointed that out, he's like, "That's impossible. She would not. Nothing could hurt her." <laughs> so now, now that that little dent in there, kind of like I wish they in the in the beginning, like she would have cut herself on the home planet of Krypton or hit her head, so they could justify yeah. why she has a real a, a, a mark, on, you know, on her face, like a. Maybe board. they'll maybe they'll go through it later. No, I think they're just gonna completely ignore it and just yeah, I mean, probably yeah, they're just gonna keep it. But she was uh, she was cute. She she looked she played the part well so far. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it when it comes on. It'll it'll be good to see how that goes. Good to get a female lead out there. Yeah. Bruce Tim announced that they're doing a Killing Joke animated feature. I just saw yeah. that. Yeah. That is going to be amazing. And I'm, if, glad, I'm glad it's Bruce Tim too. If they stick to it, and I feel like because it's Bruce Tim, they'll, they'll stick to it. Oh yeah. Because he doesn't seem to be one to like you know, especially with like as brutal. And as hardcore as Gods and Monsters is, yeah. from what I've seen so far, it's really brutal. It's that uh, he should have no problem doing the the Barbara Gordon scene. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it's kind of weird that DC pulls the cover mm-hmm. of Joker and Batgirl because of what it stood for. But now, hey, we're gonna pull a cover, but, but we're, we're gonna, gonna go ahead and movie, give it yeah. to you in animated form. Like that makes no sense. Who knows, man? That doesn't make any sense, but I can't wait. Oh, that's gonna be. That's great. one of those like I'll have to purchase that as yeah. soon as it comes out. Yeah, that's a must own. And uh, that's actually the only announcements for animation from them. But they did announce that what we talked about a couple weeks ago, speculation on a Green Lantern Corps movie, that is happening. Yep. Uh, they're still saying possibly Chris Pine as Jordan. Uh, I'm really hoping it's not Tyrese. Wasn't Chris Pine speculated to be Trevor in the Wonder Woman though? Uh, yeah, we talked interest. about that. Yeah, uh, about that. can't talk. We talked about that as well. Yeah. About that possibly being a, a swerve, mm-hmm. so to keep the Green Lantern stuff a secret. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Because there's also possible talk that that East Clint Eastwood son, who was seen on the set of Suicide Squad, may be playing Deathstroke. Yeah. No, not Deathstroke. That was. But again, that was another thing we said might just be like throwing you a curveball. Yeah. That he's not going to be Steve Trevor, but actually Deathstroke. Uh, I don't know what he looks like. Could he play that Robin? Because remember, there's a Robin suit in that trailer, Batman. You know, it was funny because I was on. I was talking to Chris yesterday. We were talking about how it it would be cool if they tied in the Nolan movies, just the mm-hmm. continuity into the new uh, universe. So obviously, they just replaced Bale with Affleck. Right. He's retired after the events of the third Batman movie. You know how he goes to the island, he retires or whatever, and leaves the keys to the Batcave to Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So what if Joseph Gordon-Levitt in that time became Robin, 
Joker took care of him, and that's the suit you see, and that's why he comes back, and he's nah. like, I'm done. No, nah, that, that makes too much sense, so it's probably not going to be. Yeah. 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 I mean, the only thing we couldn't... Only it sounds thing, pretty cool, so it's probably yeah. not going to yeah. happen. The only thing we really couldn't tie in at first was the whole Joker aspect of it, because uh-huh. Ledger had the scars. Right. But then we were like, well, in the New 52, he cut his face off, then he has the, the surgery, and now he looks normal again. So it's like, well, maybe it was one of those things where he breaks out, has surgery, and now he looks for some reason like Jared Leto. Right. Like a like a junkie juggalo, yeah, the crystal meth joker, <laughs> pretty much. So that was like our our conspiracy with they were like, well, if they decided to go that route, I mean, that would be interesting. But I, I don't feel like from what we got in the trailer, which we're about to talk about. Yes. Wait, that, so is this going or no? But, well, we're going to get to that next, and then we're going to Justice League to wrap it up, or I mean, Dawn of Justice. Okay, okay. okay. I felt like they. I take my yes. Back. I don't think that. <laughs> I think Batman's still active currently. I don't think we're getting a retired Bruce. So I think Batman. You mean still retired active. after like a year? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hated that. Are yeah, you talking about uh, the Ben Affleck version? Yeah, the Ben Affleck version. I think he's currently running around as Batman. He better be. Better Otherwise, be why would they it have that? Look scene? Like it though, like, but why would they have that scene where it shows them picking up that criminal and he's got like a bat brand on him and Clark Kent's all wanting to investigate Batman? Why would he have been retired and then have that scene there. It doesn't make sense. So yeah, clearly I think accurate. about that. They did show... Oh, about that. But hold, well, hold, hold on, yeah, hold on for the second. Trailer. Suicide yeah. Squad. Okay. We got the first official, real, full-length trailer. I was unimpressed by unofficial it. Unofficial because it's leaked. Oh, okay, unofficial. Not impressed by it, man. Well, here's the thing. When uh, Heath Ledger came out as Joker, everyone heard the laugh and they hated it. It sounded too... I don't know if it was feminine or what... I actually like Jared Leto's laugh, which kind of worries me. Because what if that's the best part of his joke? <laughs> yeah, I, see, <laughs> you know, like, you know? I was like one of those people that like I felt like, although Heath Ledger for me didn't fit the part, I knew that he was good enough that he had the acting chops to make it. And then when I heard about like how crazy that he had taken it before I'd even seen the movie, I was pretty confident that it would be good. I have no confidence in... Really? The Crystal Meth Joker. Really? And Jared Leto? No. I actually think he's a really good actor. I think he's a great actor, yeah, too. And but I, I think he has the chops now that sometimes doesn't even matter when it comes to story and who's directing and who's writing and producing. It's the, and, the look, man. Yeah. The I'm look is what just him. ruins it. That, yeah. He didn't have anything to do with the look. Like the, the grill, <laughs> yeah, the like, tattoos, that just ruins well, it. It ruins it. With Heath it. Ledger's look, I, don't, I wasn't impressed when I saw the first image. I was like, what the hell is this? But I'm hoping his acting, his character could kind of let you forget that. Or like transcend the sh- yeah, look. I mean, that's how good I think he is, so I'm hoping... But we're talking about one character in a movie with a lot of people. It's like it, a lot of things got yeah, to go right. Yeah, one character with, an, with it's an, an overcrowded cast, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. Of all characters that have not, in my opinion, been handled correctly. Well, all the the only one that looks partially right is Deathshot or Deadshot. Dead, Deadshot. And, and he still doesn't look right. Him, yeah. And then when you find out Harley Quinn got that role, the girls playing her only got it because Will Smith. Uh, like they in that movie they made. They made a robbery movie. Oh, yeah? He was the one who suggested her as Harley yeah. Quinn to the director. So it's like, mm. And I don't really care for the look of Harley. No, nah, I don't, I don't like... care. I mean, it's not bad, it's, but I, it's not It's more Harley. new fi- It's definitely yeah. it's more new trashy. Yeah. It's not like... But if she could pull it off right... Yeah, if, she, if they pull it off, I mean... Not to know. mention, they could also give her different outfits throughout the mm-hmm. movie, which I'm hoping, you know, for all of them. I mean, I think it's cool because we had spoken that, like, we there were, we were speculating on whether Batman would actually be in it. The trailer clearly shows that Batman in is, is in it because he's on top of the Joker's car. Yeah. Trying to stop. So it's probably how they end up in prison. Or at least her. If right. they have him in as, no, as much time as they had him in the animated Suicide Squad, uh-huh. that, that'd be okay. I mean, Wait, there's was... an animated Suicide Squad? Where yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an Oh, Arkham the Assault on Arkham. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, he was in it, not not primarily, but if they have him in just about that same amount of time in the right context, you could get away with that. So now, now that you said that Will Smith kind of had a hand in getting, what's Robert, her name, Margot oh, Robbie? Yeah. yeah. Cast in that role. Kind of makes you wonder if he did that because he knows in the comic books currently they kind of have a thing. So did he just want to make out with the hot white girl? Maybe. <laughs> is that what it is? Well, I heard him and his wife have an open marriage where they could see other people. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, well, yeah. I didn't hear that. Uh, well, that's kind of something different for a Scientologist. You know they're Scientologists, right? <laughs> yep. I heard they're Weirdos. all leaving. <laughs> yeah, they could leaving. Be. Even Tom Cruise is Even Tom Cruise yeah. is out, yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know about Tom Cruise. He's weird, but he makes some kick-ass movies lately, man. He's you know, Oblivion. Tom all Cruise, all the, I like that movie. Oblivion that movie was, was good, really man. good. Jack man. Reacher, he's kicking ass. I just Tom fan. Cruise is one of those guys where I don't like him as an actor, but he occasionally makes these movies that are just really good, man. Oblivion was one. I really liked The Last Samurai, even yeah. though historically it was kind of <laughs> retarded. Yeah, yeah it but, was. Uh, Bro, it was so it was uh, 47 Ronin and you want to throw another white guy playing the Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? yeah, but he's supposed to be a white guy. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it, true. Again, you, you got Keanu Reeves who can't act with, with a shit. Yeah, I'm still unimpressed by this, which if you, you said you listen every once in a while, people that do listen know <laughs> I have been very vocal. About, even on Facebook, the people that listen are like, well, Brian, we already we know that you hate this movie. We already haven't seen it. I want to go no, for it as much that. as, hey, you're going to watch it, though. I'm, I'm going to see it. it. Yeah, of course. We're going to get together I, I with a book out. We're going to do a review. My expectations are so low that when I watch it, I'm happy. That's, that's what all, I'm thinking. That's all I want. I'm thinking my expectations are so low on this one that I'm going to come out and I'm like, that was f***ing awesome. <laughs> you know, it'll be like Superman. Like, my expectations for Man of Steel were so low that I went and saw it. And this guy knew I liked it because I went home and immediately changed my Facebook icon to Superman logo. Yep. Mine was, mine was, was like, the other way around. Awesome. Mine were so high and the movie was like a letdown for me until I realized that I was thinking too much of it. So the more I watch it, the more I enjoy it now. I get... I think... I thought uh, that movie was great. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people's issue with that movie is that they're expecting this like Christopher Reeves 1980s Superman. But what they don't realize is it's, it's the 21st century. And if you really look at the times... And the way society views things, Superman fits into the mold of today's standards. I just in my wish opinion. I, it, it wasn't so much of his first time flying, and I, you know what? I, the well, yeah, because we've about seen all that stuff. So Return of Superman yeah. was he was Superman already. He didn't have to. Yeah, they always do a small yeah, origin, and, but I, I just wish he was. And that was the time. only good thing about Superman Returns is that he was Superman, and then the rest of the movie sucked. Yeah, that whole yeah, movie was horrible. That. I hated that. I want to like that movie every time I see it. It's just, it's just a huge it's raging a piece of shit. Boring. Yeah. But you know what, man? You know how much money I could have made had I officially... Because I did say it on the show when people were bashing Man of Steel, especially Carrie, because he was like, Superman doesn't kill him. Remember, he was like super firm on that. And I was like, but this is the rookie Superman. He yeah, just started. Yeah, that's what I was And then that's say. when they announced Batman and Superman. I was like, watch. That movie is going to be about Batman coming to take Superman down and dealing with the consequences of him, of the first... And what, right? what is Batman Superman? And that's like, that's what I've been telling everybody. Shh, we're going to the boat And he this. does kill, because he killed Zod. Christopher Reed killed yeah, Zod. Yeah, totally. Right? It's just not as graphic. Like, yeah. He just snapped his neck. Yeah. The other guy just threw him in a hole. Sure, so. there's yeah. a little more, it was a little more ambiguous of a death. Yeah. But I mean, he was human. He threw him down in the middle of the cave. And the obviously, he's banging off the walls and he's getting all f***ed up. He's going to die. Yeah. There's no way he survived that. So moving on to our final piece of, of this discussion, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Can't wait. Wow. Holy f***ing that trailer. Like, dude, we've been talking about this this movie for probably a year and a half, two years now. I mean, you can go back to like early Spinner Rack episodes. We did a bat casting episode where we talked about all the previous Batman and Ben Affleck and our feelings on it at that point. And I think the whole time we have been like, well, it's really a wait and see, a wait and see, a wait and see. And man, if that wasn't just like, bam, hello, b- here heard, we are and we are awesome. I heard Kevin Smith in an interview when it was announced that Ben Affleck was going to be Batman. He's like, look, man, he's like, I had a talk with him. He's like, he knows how important this is. He's like, not really just for his career, but for the fan. He's, like, he's a big fan. He's like, I really don't think he's going to mess it up. I think he's already mentally preparing. And when I heard that... Yeah, he's, but you know, it's stuff you have to say. You know, it's his friend or whatever. But I was kind of thinking, I hope he's telling the truth, man. And it looks like he is because that movie looks, it looks like he's going to be, man, he might be the best Batman. I'm hoping anyway. I, now, here's my thing. Do you think people at Marvel saw this trailer and said, huh, well, we still got him beat or hmm, maybe we should change some stuff around? I think they better be worried. I don't think they need to be worried. Uh, they, <laughs> well, they don't have anything coming out till the summer. Yeah, but they, have, War. they have their yeah. fan That's base. a big gap difference because what? Batman Superman is what? February or March? It's March. No, they got okay, Thor then Deadpool's in February. Thor 3? That That's be November out. of next year. Yeah. Or 17. Ragnarok, Captain right? America 3, they're filming that's, there, Yeah, that's right? what I'm talking about. Civil yeah, War. Civil yeah. War. Yeah. So, no. yeah. Wait, Captain isn't America... there a Civil War and no. then a Captain America no, solo Cap- film? No, no. Oh, Captain Civil America, War is Captain America Civil War. 3, yeah. Okay, with everyone in it. Yeah, so February is Deadpool, March is Batman, Superman, and then you jump all the way to, what is it, May? June for Captain America? Yeah. 
So, I mean, there's a big gap there. They're not worried because that's one movie that might hit for DC and they still have a lot of other movies and they're still going to be beating out DC's rest of the movies. They still got to come out with Justice League, the Wonder Woman. They're going to... I mean, later yeah, on it might be a big deal, but right now they still have the upper hand. I think well, that, like... I don't know, man. Is like I love the Marvel movies, the majority of them. I'm not gonna sit here and like. I mean, going into Civil War and everything we know about it, how could you not be excited? Yeah, about, see, know? I'm not one of these like. Okay, when it comes to comics, yes, I'm more of like a DC fan than I am Marvel, but I am a equal opportunity basher. If they <laughs> suck, and you know this, yeah, yeah, yeah. three. We, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. horrible. Well, you know what? I've I've kind of come back around on that. I've watched it like a million times now. And I kind of like that movie better than I did the first time I saw it. You like it better than the second one? Yes. Uh, I, I like Iron Man 3 better than the second one. I've only watched Iron Man 3 once. In really? The theater. That one I have time? not watched it again. That I, says I a lot to. about well, it. I've been I've wanting to. Yeah. But I see what you're saying because I was the same way with the Michael Bay Turtles. You know, when I saw it in the theater, I was like, I, I left wanting to cry. Like, that they, that was horrible. I saw it one but time. But then I got the Blu-ray. And, the watch it in, in and then I watched it a few more times. And I was like, you know what? It wasn't as bad. Yeah, so that scene where she's bent over, yeah, like Megan Fox, yeah. it's like the best scene. Ever. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, it's uh, it's one of those situations, I guess. But uh, I feel like this movie looks awesome. I feel like people that like are just... I think a lot of the people that are bashing it are Marvel fanboys. I gotta interrupt you and go off topic for a second because you just mentioned the Megan Fox thing. And it just reminded me. Marissa Tomei is Aunt May in Spider-Man. That's fine with me, man. Yeah, that's where I've coined the new phrase. Did and you see it? And, uh, she was in that, what's that movie, Hog Wild or Wild Hogs? She's getting older, man. A lot yeah. of people, those pictures are kind of older pictures. Yeah. She'll pull it off, man. She'll be fine. Have you, you my new ac- an acronym, like, where I the came meme up with? was like, uh, Aunt May keeps getting younger with every movie, and then, like, next movie that comes out, it's going to be Megan Fox that plays Aunt May. It's the Amelf. <laughs> she's she's the Amelf. Yeah. Yeah. She's always been hot, though, for the a Aunt May. I'd like to. Yeah, man. I never thought that I would say those words, Aunt May. I'd like to. But any version, yeah, she's, <laughs> never, yeah, never, never thought those words would come out of my mouth till now. I have seen people back to Batman vs Superman bashing the whole like they're pissed off about like the handling of his parents and why you know this isn't the super and it's like dude, look at it from the perspective of today, okay? Look at the media, look how much fear mongering there is in the world and how scared people are. Of if you had a kid. That you found some alien spaceship and he has all of a sudden starts getting all these crazy. Wouldn't you be like, dude, you can do great, shit, but you need to hide it because they're going to come for you. Yeah. And when they come, they're not going to be nice about it. Two things I love from the trailer. They show the whole worshiping aspect of Superman. Mm-hmm. In reality, if there was a real Superman, yeah, they people would the change way. religion. People would follow him. People would obsess over him. Other people would hate him. But I like that they show that. You don't really see that in a lot where people are like bowing to him. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the hell is with the soldiers who are bending down as yeah, he's walking by. And if you notice, I think they all have little Superman uh, logos on their sh- on the, Yeah, I, I was I was trying I don't to know check what that's about. I think that's in another country because they show Batman in the... Uh... Oh, uh, the red sun right? outfit, remember? Yeah, yeah it's it the was Soviet. So, yeah. so, so I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so, he's, uh, he's in Mexico in one scene because it looks like it's the, 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 the Day, day of, of the Dead, dead yeah. mark. Yeah. Like, I like that aspect, uh, talking about that in the film. And then also um, when the mom says, you don't know them anything. Yeah, people I love pissed that, off about man. that. That was yeah. awesome. People are pissed off about that. No. They're like, F- that. She should have committed suicide like, in, like in Man kind. of Steel. When uh, they had the school bus scene, and he was talking to Kevin Costner about it, and he's like, I should have saved them. He's like, maybe you shouldn't have. Yeah, you know? but that was taken out of context in the trailer. At the end, he says, I don't know. You know, it was, because he doesn't know. He doesn't, right. you yeah. don't have that conversation with anyone except right. him. Except the yeah, school. Should I save his so life like, or no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> people are like, oh, this is bullshit. That's not, you know, mom and pop can't win until, first, first and foremost, their parents. Yeah. And I know as a parent myself. If that was my kid, I would be like preaching caution. Yeah, don't go out and there plus, and do all this. Yeah, because... this isn't the nineteen thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. Yeah, no, you this know, isn't. This is... But when she tells him, and she's like, either do everything for them or don't do anything. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't owe them anything. So she's just telling me you have a choice. Right. She's not saying anything. I just thought it was kind of cool hearing those words. I thought it was like, great, yeah, man. Anything. I thought it was great because it proves that as much hate as there is towards him, and as much as fear as there is, that he still chooses to do the right thing and, and help people. I like uh, when they show the shots of him in the sky during the daylight and the way the sun bounces off him like he's like some sort of angel or Well, messiah. that's what they're portraying to those people. Like right? a yeah. messiah? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're portraying. 
And then now you have Batman in the mix, and now you can show Superman's more humanity side with a dark. I just hope Batman's messed up. I don't want him to be like Christian Bale's Batman, where he's worried about the city and his people. Oh my God, no! I want Batman to be a little screwed up because how did he get there? He's he's traumatized for the rest of his life. Yeah, totally. He's not especially after the Robin. I don't want him to be like. There's got to be some yeah, scars there. Yeah, exactly. And then it's just like if you're gonna have Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, these guys have therapists on the set and they're gonna be so messed up. Batman better be on their level. And I want him, then you could see Superman's opposite side where mm-hmm. he, now he's a little more to the original type of character and by the way possibly the greatest looking batman we're ever going to see on film dude. <sighs> yeah. as far as like movements and like yeah. that whole thing with him on the corner of that building like and he shoots the ground oh my dude, god it's out that of, was and you notice it's lasers coming at it it's superman's so beam. awesome like, oh. you've so never awesome. seen anything like that <laughs> never no. i mean you've seen michael keaton shooting the the grappling gun but then it, it just it about, doesn't look as very like, just like he had time to set up well, I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to shoot this, and I'm going to get... But now nah, I was like, oh, right, you know, like, hurry up. You it know? was some Batman shit. Yeah. How about Superman on top of the Batmobile just ripping, ripping the door? Yeah, that, that was awesome. Up. I was like, nah, it looks good, man. It looks really good. I can't wait. Super excited for that. Yeah. I think we're going to have to make a, like a special uh, company trip to go see that. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing a review of that one, man. It Definitely. totally took away any criticism or fear I had from the movie. Yes, any fear that any fear or doubts I had about it's them gone. putting too much into it, pretty much just annihilated. Yeah, and the fact, and then, like, I have been a huge proponent of Gil Gadot as Wonder Woman. The girl looked badass. I, I, I've always was happy with her because in a lot of... Uh, Comic books, a lot of artists, even in animation, she does have that small slender. Face. Right, they just make her strong. So I was, I'm cool with. I've her. always said that I like Gaga Dot's face. Yeah, she's pretty. she's had the face for the character, body type. Every that's what everybody was bashing, but you can see she's put on a little bit of muscle there, and it works. The armor make covers up for whatever you know, she makes could, up for it. She get implants too, man. So she could. <laughs> <laughs> we live in the now, man. Right. 2015. No, I, I think it's gonna work, man. Yeah. I think the questions that loom are like Aquaman. You haven't even seen him yet. I know. Like, you All you saw matter. was, and I watched it a couple times. Was that one scene where somebody's underwater and there's like chains? Did yeah. You catch that? Yeah. That's yeah. all, and I was like, okay, that's all I know. Not to mention, we don't even know if there's other cameos in there. Well, Flash is supposed to be in it, right? That mm-hmm. guy playing the. So I just I can't wait. And then what about Lex? What did you guys think of Lex? I think you know it was he was all right. The red capes are coming. That to me was channeling Hugh, uh, not Hugh Jackman. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the original. I know who you're talking about. Uh, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. Hugh Jackman. Gene Hackman. To you be honest with confusing. you, he's still my favorite Lex Luthor. He had the the wittiness. He portrayed being so much smart, and then he could be kind. I I still like him. That's my favorite Lex. He was funny as hell too. Yeah. But. Jesse Eyes. That could possibly be like the only. I want to know what he told Superman in that one scene, like Superman like on his knees, and then he like kind of rubs, like he's doing it, like taking his hand and putting it over Superman's head and his shoulder. And when Superman looks up, he just looks angry as hell. You know, like I want to know because you know that trailer, you could tell it was cut. Right. So I right. want to know what was said to, for Superman to look up at him and give him that look. I have a feeling with him, Lex Luthor, that type of person they picked to portray him. I, I, I don't mind. Uh, though he'll, once he gets the bald head, throw him in a suit. You know, and then as the movies progress, if they're going to keep using them, that's fine with me. We'll I'm like, just like, just let's fast forward and get to that weekend already. I want to see that yeah. shit. I'm, I'm, the Super age excited. difference is, is, is off-putting, though. Lex is not supposed to be that much younger. Yeah, than no. Superman, which is a little, but you know what? That's fine. If he could You know what, though? Off. I don't think in reality they're that much, they're really that. No. There, there might be like a five or to eight year age difference. But nowadays you can't even tell. Yeah. You know, what are you, 37, 35, man. Oh, whatever, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you, 65? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, 65. You mother... That gray. 39, man. 39. I'm 39. I'll be 40 this year. Sounds about right. We're old. Well, Bloomquist is what, 50? He'll be 51? I know, that f***ing amazes me, dude. It's so. a good life, man. Right? <laughs> I don't know. That I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't know. That dude looks good like, for you. Like, all age, that man. gray, you got a few mm-hmm. here. I'm starting to get some, and it's like, man. Yeah, I know. I'm like salt and pepper, like hardcore, man. But the, I like that on Affleck, too, dude. The gray on that, yeah. man, it looks good. on the temples. Got a little Reed Richards going on. I really appreciate the fact that it looks like like when they show him like running towards the devastation into the big cloud. I love how it, it factors. Like, it takes place during Man yeah. of Steel. I love when yeah, you see stuff the like beam. that. 
Yeah, just totally. The city. And then it says Wayne Financial. I think uh, when he's graduating. Wayne Enterprises. Uh-huh. It's financial. Is that's it what really? Because remember, they're in Metropolis. Wayne oh, Enterprises. that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, okay. It's, so it's going to be... Uh, just a coincidence that Bruce Wayne happened to be in Metropolis, you know, while that was going on. It's called Faith, brother. That's what it's called, man. It's going to be awesome, man. I agree. Awesome. I agree. I think it's going to be good. And I think all these naysayers that are like, oh, I think it looked like they're just, you know what? Get the Marvel out of your mouth. Those are the people. I, now, that's, now that's a coming to beep. <laughs> because I literally meant it as a, as a in their mouth. Yeah, I'll beep that beeps. too. That could be a lot of beeps. <laughs> the last three minutes of this. Like, sound like an R2D2. We'll <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. All this talk about all this comic book stuff, I totally forgot about Star Wars. Make me sick. We're running, we're running at the 45 minute mark here. This is a little extra long episode, but there's Sorry. a lot to talk about. We'll, we'll squeeze in Star Wars real quick, getting it out. I love how it wasn't a trailer, but it still blew away almost everything, everything that was shown. Except for the Batman Superman trailer. Yeah. Depending who you ask. Well, yeah, yeah. I just hope Star Wars breaks every record known. Um, dude, there's no way. I'm still mad that Fast and Furious Seven broke some kind of record. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, it that did. Star Wars is gonna like it's gonna yeah, be. Better, I mean, cities. I shut feel down. like this is yeah. the, this is the <laughs> Star Wars movie we deserve. You're gonna see like when Blackhawks win and you see the overhead view of like the streets just full of people. Yeah. That's that better be the theaters for Star Wars. It oh, will, will be. be. It will be. Yeah. Well, look how look at the turnout for the prequels, and they were. God awful. And yeah, but we didn't know they were going to be awful. The second one, we kind of suspect. The third yeah. one, we were just hoping because you see Vader. like. Yeah, no, second. I think after we saw the first one, we kind of knew like. <laughs> and then the second like, one, well, we're like, f- the second one confirmed it. And then the third yeah. one, we were just hoping we yeah. did something like, good. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, the like, third was the best out of those three. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I shared the story on the, on the show before of how I like almost got in a physical altercation mm. at a midnight showing of Attack of the Clones. You know, the funny thing is, I actually uh, have, I worked with someone when those movies had just finished coming out. He said his kid loved them. And a lot of kids really Well, yeah, that's, oh, yeah it's because they, they totally made it for kids. So, um, you know, maybe it, I missed a big mark of that. I mean, the movie still sucks. Like, I said I, it before, I'll say it again. When you sit down and watch that, first time I sat down and watched that movie, halfway through it, I was with my cousin, I was like, dude, this is a two and a half hour f- commercial for toys. Yeah. Yeah. It's no substance. And those toys suck, too. And they did suck. For Phantom Menace, I only watch when he fights Darth Maul. Yeah. Like when they, those 30 when, seconds yeah, where they it's fight? Like the best part of that movie. Uh, episode 2, when they attack, they come and rescue them at the end. It's just the endings I like. Episode 3, I could watch a little bit here and there, but man, those movies are horrible. So you're right, we do deserve this movie. And I think know, it's going to be awesome. It's shaping up to look really good. And I think, you know, I think part of the, the problem with the original, the, the prequels, I mean, not the original, because that's... They were restricted Those to what awesome. they could say because they had to get the path to get to where they already were. Whereas well, this they one, weren't that's really that restricted. The, the, the problem was, is yeah, they had to get to a predetermined path with those prequels. Yeah. But they was the f- execution was just sloppy. Yeah, George Lucas. Because there was so much f- that I felt as a fan. I mean, now I understand like a five to ten year old kid didn't need to see it. Right. But 30 year old me did. It was just the fact that George Lucas could no longer put up coherent story with good character mm-hmm. building. I mean, if you ever watch the um, the extra DVDs, like the this 2 and all the mm-hmm. extras, you see that when they're making the movie, especially in episode 2, they have a, a bunch of uh, stormtroopers on uh, on the, the bikes, the speeder bikes. They have all these cool things that never made the final cut. And then you even see where he's watching uh, George Lucas is in a private uh, theater with his crew, and they just finished watching the first cut, and he even's like, man, maybe I kind of you know, overdid my bounds a little. They're all looking at, they were all yes men. No one was sitting there yeah. telling George Lucas, no, you need to do this, yeah, he needed, to do that. He needed someone there to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So the good thing with Disney owning it is they don't have to do much, but have some a few competent people here and there, and they're going to totally make it look better. And they got Abrams, dude. And I think, like, you're talking about the guy that, like, took and elevated the Star Trek franchise. The only thing I didn't like with that, I was worried that he was, I didn't like the Star Trek movies because it took away from me. It, it, it updated it. It was more action, more intense, but it took away... I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I love the story. I love the... the so last... you don't like how it ties in, though? How it's no, an I just timeline? think J.J. Abrams is going to be a much better Star Wars director, and I didn't like the direction he took Star Trek, because not only did he change the timeline, he also... You, you're missing a lot of what you know Gene Roddenberry... It was more of a feeling. It's not as crazy as Star Wars. That's how come there's such a huge difference there. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like... The 
the action. There's just too much action. I mean, it's stupid to say out loud. I guess not to think about it, but it was just yeah, it something stupid. about the Star Trek movies was missing. But I think for Star Wars, J.J. Abrams fits perfect. Yeah. Because he's a good enough storyteller or good enough to see and make sure the characters all get their... And I, and I like the fact that they've went back and this is what I was going to say before is I felt like George Lucas on the prequels relied too heavily on CG. Whereas... I feel like with the new Abrams Star Trek movies, or Star Wars movies, they're going back to like a more principle of like actually making Well, mm-hmm. this is what he did. George Lucas made all the technology so all the movies like Lord of the Rings and all that could happen with sound, with digital. So what he did it when he first made the first trilogy is he pushed the envelope. Yeah, totally. But since he was limited... He couldn't get his, his idea, so everything that came out was okay. But here, since he had unlimited potential, he was just going off. Yeah, and he went just, just too far. You're right. right. The, a, a whole blue screen for every scene yeah. with no background, it's horrible. But now, because of him, we do have this technology. And so it's a catch-22. like, you know, instead of, like, why couldn't, like, they didn't rely as heavily on, like, costumes and, like, actually creating the creatures. It was just all published. Yeah. Which I feel like with this new Star with this new Star Wars, I don't know why I keep saying it's because of Abrams. I keep saying Star Trek. With the new Star Wars movie, it feels like a lot, a lot more um, just boosts, of a realistic yeah. feel to it because they're actually building the creatures, they're actually making the costumes. Yeah, and, like Lord of the Rings and yeah. Game of Thrones, they build these elaborate sets, mm-hmm. and it all helps with the final product. Man, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. Wrong. Sorry. And we haven't even seen a Sith yet. That's what I can't. Yeah, I don't care. Wait, man. And then, not to mention, you bring back Luke. Everyone wants to see Luke yeah. again. I don't care too much about... Uh, but just Solo. the original character, yeah. I'll just yeah. in general, because yeah. they all have their fans. Solo, Chewie, R2, C3. Well, Solo, you know, Harrison Ford always kind of knocked Star Wars, so I don't really need Harrison Ford or Prince, but I, Mark Hamill's always been... He, uh, dad, he, his whole life, he understands that's his, probably his best thing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm happy for him that he gets to do it again. I want to see him. It's like, I can't wait. I can't wait, man. It'll be good, man. It's going to be a good good next year for comic book nerds. And the year after. And if you really think about it, we're only a few months away. Like, we get Star Wars before we get everything else. Yeah, I know. Christmas, man. And it's funny because I like that it's not being promoted. It's not. Yeah. It's just going to hit one week and every time you turn around, every time. I you think go that's going to be the movie that overtakes Avengers as the number one all time. Oh, yeah. I would think so. Mm-hmm. Especially in the long run. Yeah. And I think of, out of all the franchises, that it deserves that title. I just secretly, in my brain, hope Batman vs. Superman can surpass, or at least get close to Avengers, money-wise. So, in your in your world, you would like Star Wars, Force Awakens, best grossing movie. Yeah. After that, Superman, Batman. After that, the Avengers. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and the only reason I feel that way is it's not that I like Avengers less. It's that uh, people are too... Like I said earlier, man, the Marvel in so many mouths I just hate the fact I don't that mind just, what order those three movies are in only because the top three movies will be owned by sci-fi comic movies totally so yeah. I don't even care all I'm saying is when Batman vs. Superman comes out these, these unapologetic Marvel fans need to give it its, its due they won't because those are the same people who think uh, both Avengers movies have no flaws and they have a lot of flaws yeah so except for that man. yeah like how they're talking to each other with absolutely no communication devices during that final battle all the droids I, didn't, I never even caught that huh? how about like in Star Wars when they kill the ship all the droids fall same in Avengers yeah. they blow up the ship these guys were real like organic eh let's just die yeah let's just clean it off real simple it's like stupid issues man issues um, that's been our well it's all good because on Friday, we got Ant-Man. Ant-Man, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, enjoy. I'm a big Paul Rudd fan, so I, and then it looks good. It looks like they... You know, you could, you could come pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a review. <laughs> there you go. I like that, that that's his excuse for movies he doesn't want to watch. Well, I'll watch and then we just do a review on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's like probably the only reason that I'll, I'm actually going to get off my ass and go out and see Suicide Squad. Is because we'll do a review of it. Well, Bookout's got to go with us today. Yeah. There's no way that he's not. Yeah, you guys will just have to get your ass here early he would, in the morning. He would, like, disown us. We'll catch, like, a, a 9 o'clock showing of it. Have fun, man. Go get some breakfast. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at you like, I wake up what? at 7 in the morning to make it, make it at 9. Yeah, I'm looking at you yeah, like, that or, or we could just go to, like, a late night. We could go a late night one and we could just bring all the recording equipment and just record in the car. That way, right out the theater, you're just like, all right. 
That'd be real awkward. Yeah. That would be strange. But uh, that's it, man. That's all we got for this week. You gonna plug? Plug the Facebook. Plug everything. Check us out on Facebook. Ahead. Check us out on Twitter. Comics Remix at Spinner Rack. I don't know what your Twitter is, Alex. If you want to plug. You don't have a Twitter. No, I don't have a Twitter. No Twitter. You got an Instagram. Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Shaitan Sideline, you can catch me there. Right on, man. You can contact us all with any questions, comments, or tell us the <laughs> solves at commentstreetmix.com. Hey, Alex, you can you send those Brian. to Brian, man. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> tell us to go f*** yourself. Send that to Brian and Jr. I'm cool with that. Because I get mad easily. I show up at your house. Like, what you <laughs> There's only about five of you out there, so it's going to be <laughs> Oh, it take me about a Saturday to find out, guys. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Good episode, gentlemen. We'll see you back here next week. Peace. Peace.